Why is the Bay Area known to be so bad for dating, especially if you're a guy? And is there a possible solution to it? Let's delve into it. Dude, there's hella 49ers, bro. We got to talk about this because, Andrew, the Asian male internet is surprisingly agreeing with this UC Berkeley professor who is under fire for telling guys to get out of artillery range of the range between San Francisco and San Jose because apparently for some reason that people listed off a thousand of them, it's really bad for dating for guys. Right, and this was a white computer science professor at UC Berkeley. I believe he's married to an Asian woman from Asia. But anyways, regardless, he came under fire because it was like an inappropriate thing to say in like the the student discord, but a lot of people agree because this has been talked about for decades, guys. Have you heard of 49ers, the fours that act like Niners? I Listen, I'm not saying how true it is, but there's a bunch of reasons why people say it's true. Hey, we're about to break it down. Make sure you check out Smala Sauce at SmalaSauce.com. You know, it's interesting, Andrew, because usually like the white guy's opinion on dating sometimes is like going against the Asian guys, but apparently they agree. I've heard the same thing about Seattle. I believe it is primarily driven, Andrew, from the tech industry, which brings a lot more heavy volume distribution of men versus women, right? Mm. As a result, I guess the women get really picky and uh, the guys are just like, man, it's just not a fun time to have. Um, also, people were talking about how there is a lot of ABGs in the Bay Area. But of course, if you are not a top ranked Kevin Wynn ABB, you have no appeal to the ABGs. And that actually hurts it for, I guess, the nerdy guys who have been there, or even like an average guy. Uh -huh. Another big reason is traffic. So I heard this, and I've seen this from friends and pe people, multiple people have told me this, and this is listed, that uh, SF residents really only date within San Francisco, and that goes the same for Oakland and Berkeley residents too, because the traffic can get so bad is that you, you, you don't want to be 30, 45 to five minutes an hour from each other. So you're just dating within essentially your borough. A lot of people also said that Asian engineers are seen as less cool than engineers of other races. And then uh, a lot of Asian guys dress poorly here because they're engineers. And that just confirms and perpetuates pre-existing stereotypes. Even though in LA, that's where all the stylish Asian guys move or New York, where that stereotype is more broken in real life. Yeah, and they also say there's an imbalance where nearly 60% of the people in the Bay Area are men, meaning that women get to be more picky. And if they're more, if women get more choices, then they're obviously gonna have even a higher standard and, you know, gonna get to exercise that and take advantage of that situation. Right, right, right. It's very interesting to see places, Andrew, go famous for being bad for dating, Seattle, the Bay Area, and then people actually like lose their careers because they stand on business so bad, like this white guy trying to like say it in the computer science chat. Mm. Now, like, by the way, that's that's an inappropriate place to make that comment, right? even if the comment was true. I'll tell you this. I spent a lot of time in the Bay, Andrew, LA, New York, Seattle, Houston, Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, DFW. And uh, Seattle reminds me of a Bay Area light, by the way. And I just agree with this guy's breakdown in generality. But I will say that, you know, you could optimize it different ways. Like if you were to become a club promoter, obviously be a bartender, work at a bar, you would be trying to optimize for like the pings and ultimately an overall not that optimal fishbowl. Right. Right, you can optimize, I'm saying, for your own individual positioning even within uh, a game that's like not the best game to be playing, mm. right? Um, also, I'll say this. It's just like colleges. You know how there's party colleges, hyper-intellectual colleges, and there's dry campus colleges that completely have no party scene in America. Mm. Cities are actually kind of the same way. We went to the University of Washington, agree with me or not, Andrew, not famous for partying. No, not not a huge party school. Yeah, I would say that most people rank UW like a 5.5 .5 out of 10. But yeah, if you were like the best looking guy in the best frat, for sure, you probably still had a crazy time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there, there's a lot of individual movement within uh, macro narratives. Well, guys, I'm shocked that when you got a bunch of computer coders and nerds together, that it was started to uh, be hard to date because essentially you're meeting the, the what is it, the Nash equilibrium? Like not everybody can get the hottest girl. If everybody goes for the hottest girl, then nobody gets anything. Um, one thing that I will say is this, is that uh, his solution was to just increase your radius. So let's say you're using a dating app and you're just looking at like a 20 mile radius in the Bay Area. This guy says the only way to break this dating curse in the Bay Area is open up your radius to 100 miles. Therefore, you're matching with girls and women from, San, uh, from Las Vegas, 
and LA, Reno. Uh, LA as well, right? And LA, essentially, or like all of Northern California. Fresno. So, so you have to Mong Chick. extend it to 100 miles is what he said. David, is that an actual viable solution for most people if they meet somebody 90 miles away? Uh, I guess if you are going to stay in the Bay Area because your parents are there and you just feel so many allegiances that you can't break, then I can see how that's like optimizing for within a situation that's never going to be great. Mm. Like I said, um, everybody just said SF sucks for so many reasons. San Jose to San Francisco. They call it man Jose apparently because the, of the gender disparity. Somebody said that, you know, for me, I was able to get ABGs once I got really buff and really ripped and I had some tattoos, but then I realized they were just liking me for the look because the ABG girls wanted to be with a rough buff tattooed bodybuilder guy but ultimately my personality was more with the fob girls the international students yeah, yeah yeah that works that happens but but you know what the key was andrew this guy had the optionality because he was super ripped yeah well they just need to import some more nerdy women from maybe other countries to the bay area somehow i don't know how you're gonna attract them give like you know what i mean like how do you gonna attract more women to the bay area and then so if the bay area is a big place that is imbalanced where there's more women than men. I mean, more then, men than women. Yeah, more men than women. Then what cities have more women than men? New York City, Andrew. Fashion, marketing, a lot of, lot of art. Art is here. Woo! Hey, listen, guys. Stereotypical or not, those you look at the stats of those fields. There's fields that are heavily men-weighted, heavily female-weighted. It just is what it is still in 2024. Um, somebody said, uh, the problem with a lot of nerds are is that they like ABGs, but ABGs are looking for a ABB Kevin Wynn type that is high level and they super do not fit what the ABGs are looking for. But then you got a computer programming guy or a guy who's like marketing at Yelp and he wants the ABG. Andrew, you Yo, man, you guys got to stop thinking about ABGs like this, man. First of all, ABGs is an aesthetic. Second of all, real ABGs do not want your average computer programmer. Even if you get... 99 if, times out of even 100. Even if they get with a coder, he's not going to be typical. Just so you know. He so, coding crypto illegal programs. So please... Shut up about that and keep it moving. Somebody said, man, I feel like sometimes in the Bay Area, specifically SF, white nerds are more sought after than even a slightly cool Asian guy. Uh, and then people obviously posted the photo of the guy who even said that. I will say this. That is true, especially in the past. I actually think it's less true. I think a white nerd in SF, Andrew, is actually even starting to struggle because like we said, Andrew, not every white nerd is Fred again or Diplo. Mm. Like those guys are like kind of nerds because they make music and you know, yeah. got to do all the stuff on a computer. Um, somebody just said it's because the nerds, mostly Chinese guys, confirm the stereotypes enough to perpetuate it. The uh, classic, and somebody said, nope, it's because you want your parents around. And somebody just said, man, Come to the Midwest, bro. The Midwest is great, man, because you don't even have to be stylish. You just got to be a cool dude with a beer in your hands. And then somebody else said, come on, man, let's be serious. The Midwest, I don't care if it's free from these dynamics. That's like the last place I would possibly want to live as an Asian guy. And they went on to name the pros and cons of every region, Andrew. This guy said, if you want to be an Asian guy, you move to Texas, Houston. You got to be sporty and masculine. Would you agree with that? I agree. I agree. In the East Coast, you have to have the mind of an elite school finance bro, regardless of whatever industry you're in. You have yeah, to be like- You, you got to be smart, witty, ambitious in the East Coast. You have to be like the wolf of Wall Street of whatever your lane is, right? Somebody just said Midwest, horrible to live, no Asian culture, no Asian food, no Asian restaurants, no Asian communities. Somebody said Arizona might be underrated. The Southwest, you like it, Andrew? You've been to Arizona a few times, Phoenix- Arizona's not bad. Um, and then somebody just said the West Coast Asian enclaves tend to mimic the worst parts of Asia when it comes to materialism, and uh, even though they are pretty nice. And then the East Coast, Coast Asian enclaves, Andrew, feel like ghetto parts of East Asia, like Flushing. All right, That's guys. That's hilarious, by the way. Hey, man, we always say, man, you got to check out the 626 in Gabriel Valley if you want that easy breezy Chinese American life. Um, I'll tell you this. I think the Bay Area, if you're rich and you're raising a family, probably some good systems. But if you're a single guy, you want to go on five dates a week, a bad place to be. Well, yeah, I don't know why you would go to the Bay, take a high level tech job that's very demanding and think that your dating opportunities are going to be like extremely vast. Like just you have to understand what game you're entering. You're entering like coder land like there's gonna be a lot of smart people they're doing a lot of great things right. they're advancing there's a lot of ai guys you're gonna have a lot of great conversations about everything from crypto to ai to ride sharing to all these different to even a dating app 
that's based in the Bay Area. Right. How funny is that? You know, but actually Tinder came out of L.A., so that kind of makes sense. Right, right, right. More of uh, the fun apps come out of L.A. Yeah. Um, I would say this. Also, there is a lot of different types of people in the Bay Area, but I noticed more of the AZN, like ABG, ABZ, you know, Daily City, San Jose, whatever you want to call East San Jose type. They more like stay within their world. Yeah. It's not going to be like, oh, they just met you because you got a, a degree from Northwestern or Northeastern. They don't care about that. Yeah, I would say this. If you are a tech guy and you're in the Bay and you have a good job and you can do it remotely, then obviously spending time in different cities is going to benefit you. So then you're still part of the Bay Area company, but you're actually enjoying the life somewhere else. Right, you're taking, saying take advantage of work from home or remote work. Yes, but as far as solutions on how to beat the game, extend your radius to 100 miles is what he said. I, I couldn't even imagine doing that, to be honest, for myself, but... I don't know. Maybe it works for other people. Some, if, if you're a good enough product, maybe a girl will drive in from Central California. I'll say this. A lot of life is about fishbowl positioning. Okay? Which fishbowl are you putting yourself in or what pool of fish are you fishing in? Here's the thing, though. You got to make sure your lures are strong if you want to use the pool analogy. And if we're going to be fish living in different fishbowls, Andrew, you still got to fish max and be the strongest fish you can be regardless of the position. I mean, it's like it's twofold. It's the fishbowl positioning. But you got to be a strong fish yourself, whatever that looks like, whether that's uh, just optimizing, being cooler, getting better. The stuff that we talk about on this channel and stuff that we review. Of course, family considerations do come into play. Lifestyle, friends, priority. It really depends. It's just all an algorithm with different equations split. You weigh it all out, guys. Listen, a lot of Asian people good at math. Just do the math. Make the decisions. Execute. All right, everybody, let us know in the com uh, comments down below. Is the Bay Area really that bad for dating? And what are some suggestions specifically for Bay Area dating? This is really interesting because uh, I heard Manhattan has more women than men. Also, Seattle. I, th I throw Seattle in there as, as, as suboptimal, unless oh. you're born there. Oh, you mean as a not a great place yeah, yeah, to date? Yeah, not a great a place. place. If you want to date 100 women in your life before settling down, don't go to the Bay or don't go to Seattle unless you're Fred again. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.